good afternoon. Morning and good afternoon. Go, go get some water for a second. Blessings to you, blessings to you. I'll wait a little bit more, see who comes on. Thank you, Father. Can you come on, say hello so that I know that you're here, please. Blessings to you on this, what is today? Today is Friday. Today is Friday, uh, the last day of the month. Come on, say hello, please. I know who's on with me. Blessings to those that will see by YouTube. Blessings to you, Elder Boy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Blessings to you, Apostle Rachel, female king. God bless you from New York, from Long Island. Good to see you. I have a word that I, I, I want to release, I need to release. Um, it's really, um, in many ways, a follow-up from words that I've been releasing on my podcast um, and in my movements there are certain audiences and those who hear and follow um, to where I need to convey the mind of God um, as a governmental prophet to the body of Christ and we are into the year 5783 so welcome to the Lord's new year and all of that is about to unfold, but I'm going to prophesy according to the scripture as usual when I come on and, and then move on with my day. But the Holy Spirit interrupted the movements in my day that I might convey this word. Uh, for those that if you, if you choose to, please share as it is a word to the body of Christ at large and even to the world. I want to give thanks to my new friends, Apostles Lamont and Tiffany Bigham, and for this, my mother. Hi, Mom. See see what I got on today in my work day? It's my first time wearing this, this regal 
accessory, accessory that, that you blessed me with, so thank you. The Lord reminded me of this and had me to put it on. Um, uh, but um, I want to thank my friends, Apostle uh, Lamont and Tiffany, for this sound, for the, 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 the uh, melody that you hear called The Well. And this is available for those that were here on YouTube. It is available on iTunes the, with the lyrics and this is the instrumental. There's a sound to it because this sound speaks to the movement of God. And the movement of God that is taking place in the earth that many of the body of Christ don't understand of how God is moving in the earth. He is readying us, beloved, for his kingdom. He is readying us for his kingdom. And there's a movement and a marching and a melody and a hunger, of a spiritual hunger and thirsting after the things of God. And God is speaking. So I want to help clarify. I am sure that there have been other prophetic voices that have been on social media platforms conveying the mind of God. But I'm speaking today according to what has been entrusted to me, as is my responsibility. And there are times when the Holy Spirit simply gives me a nudge and says, don't forget to tell my people. So I'm going to be looking at, after I pray, I'm going to be looking at Leviticus chapter 23 so that we may see exactly where we are and speak prophetically to the hour that we're in, in this time of the Lord's new year. There is always and always has been a Rosh Hashanah for 5,783 5, years and also been that which is coming of what is called Yom Kippur of a day or a day of atonement. But I want to prophesy and I'm going to prophesy today for those that are now and those that were here as to what God is saying right now. What God is saying in this hour, in this season to help us, especially in Western civilization to understand our convictions and our movements if that's all right. If that's all right, if that's all right. When you come in, and as you come in, uh, just say hello, say good afternoon, good evening, whatever you're coming in, so that I may acknowledge you, appreciate it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for this sitting, this time. Thank you, Father, for your body of Christ. Bless you, Ms. Edwards. Thank you for those that, that come to hear and come to see and come to know and come to understand. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for revealing to us your movements, your desires, and your will, O oh God. Thank you for this time of your kingdom. Your kingdom has come and is forcefully advancing. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessings upon, Lord God, one apostle, Dr. Yolanda Powell, Lord God, this visionary, Lord God, this king, Lord God, who has uh, moved, Lord God, in obedience to you. And for those that joined in our nation's capital, Lord God, to receive vision for our movement in our respective regions. I speak blessings upon them in the name of Jesus. Lord Father God, in this sitting, I sit as you and I as the vision of the kingdom of heaven and that vision only and that which you desire to reveal and to unfold to your people. So thank you, Lord God, for removing the blinders off of our minds and off of our eyes and the deafness out of our ears, Lord God, and removing the hardness that may be in our hearts. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that there would be a conviction to every member of the body of Christ, Lord God, to move as your sovereignty is revealing in this hour in the name of Jesus. That whatever platforms, Lord God, that this is shared and that this word is moved, Lord God, that we would understand and recognize the sovereignty of your lordship, Lord God, and of your king, of you being king of the only everlasting kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of God that you are designed to reveal within we, your body, the church. Let it be so. Let it be so even more today, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let it be so, Father, even more today in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for your movements in the earth. Lord God, thank you for blowing your Eurocliding winds. Thank you for your winds that are blowing, Lord God, throughout the earth to blow things out of your way and even into place. Thank you for your watchmen, your intercessors, your generals. Lord God, your prophetic intercessors that are speaking and decreeing and declaring your words, your legislations, Lord God, your amendments. Lord God, in the name of Jesus across this earth, in every continent, Lord God, in every country, Lord God, move, Lord Jesus. Have your way in this hour, Lord Jesus. Break the back of the enemy, Lord God, and shatter his spine, Lord God, so there is no demonic movement, Lord God, with synchronization that would move to oppose your kingdom movements. Thank you, Father God, for your strengthening and replenishing and fortifying, Lord God, your prophetic intercessors, movements, and oracles in this hour. Strengthen, O oh God, the soldiers of your apostles, Lord God, who seek and move to build according to heaven's specifications in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that this year, 5783, shall bring forth the the kingdom of God such as we've never seen before and that the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ will be made manifest. The remnant will be strengthened. The remnant will have provision, eyesight, clarity, fortification in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. For silencing, Lord God, we decree and declare that every lying tongue is wrong. Thank you for silencing, Lord God, the voice of accusations and condemnations that have come against the minds and movement of your people in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Blessings to you, O oh God. Blessings to you, O oh God, and to you alone. Blessings to you, O oh God, and to you alone. Blessings to you, O oh God, and to you alone. Thank you, Father God, for your apostolic movements that are moving within the earth. Their releases, Lord God, are being strengthened by heaven and by the angelic assistance that you've ordained for this hour in the name of Jesus. Bless you, Lord Jesus. To you be all the honor and the glory, O God. Let your trumpet continue to sound. Let your trumpet, O God, continue to sound in this hour, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. Don't forget not to move forward without the Holy Ghost in this hour. We may have been given marching orders and, and instructions and mandates and even permission and access. But make sure in this hour, Holy Spirit is letting me know to convey this, that you don't go forward without the Holy Spirit. Make sure there's the breathing of God. Not just the permission to mandate, but the breathing of God. The hovering of God. Because God is returning to that.
to where he's not, God is going to be creating as a result of where he's first hovered. Because there's a lot of people speaking, but they haven't necessarily been hovered over by the presence of the Holy Spirit. So even in your movements, even if God has spoken and revealed, make sure that you're not moving forward without the hovering presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord is saying, I'm moving some impediments from your movement and from some of you from your feet. Because quiet as it's kept, it's not that we lack faith in our movements, even in the movements of God. Many times we lack revelation. And God has invited us even through prayer and fasting and consecration. And God has invited us into levels and dimensions to function. And we get there where we say, okay, God, now what? And for some of us, God is saying, you need revelation of my kingdom in this hour. There are many systems, and I'm just going to speak this to the atmosphere for where this is going to go. Because I am going to make sure that it's on my YouTube channel, which... There are many that listen and, and watch from around the country, etc. But the purpose of my sitting again is more of a follow-up of what God has had me to be releasing on my podcast, Kingdom Chronicles. And the Lord has been conveying what 5783 is about and was talking to me in one of the previous podcasts of the purpose of the body of Christ, part one and part two. And so in this new year that we've entered into, many religiously and traditionally and understandably have entered into Rosh Hashanah and know that it's 5783. But this 5783 is different. I think I saw Dr. Chardet on. God bless you, Dr. Womack. You know I'm going to call you doctor. There are those that have entered into the new year and say, okay, this is Rosh Hashanah and we know that Yom Kippur. But my purpose in sitting is especially for those that have been following the podcast of Kingdom Chronicles and have heard the word of the body of Christ to understand this. There are those things that the Lord will not be forwarding or strengthening you in if you are not rightly tempered with the body of Christ as he has ordained. There are people that God has revealed that you need to say, I need to check you later and talk to you when I need to talk to you because they don't have the strength <laughs> They don't have the strength to walk shoulder to shoulder with you in where God is taking you. And then there are those that you really weren't associated with in time past that the Lord is saying, you need to connect with who I'm connecting you to. For though you are a part of the body of Christ, there's only one body. And no matter what country or what continent that you're in, it is the Lord's body. And the Lord chooses who and how he tempers us in his body and this year, 5783, as we have seen the exit of a sovereign in the person of, of the, the late majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, the Lord was letting me know when she passed, and I was in Texas at the time, and when I was, I was on the phone and heard that she passed and had to get off the telephone, and I had to get off the telephone because I had to ask God, what does this mean? And he said, exit one sovereign, the entrance of mine. And Queen Elizabeth and that, that reign of that majesty for the 70 years, the longest of that for Great Britain, there was a lot of territory that was taken, all right? There were a lot of things that were put into place and all of how it's reputed, I'll leave that to those that repute it, all right? But the point of that is this, as there is the sovereignty of the kingdom of God, and now that there's the exit of the sovereign of the late majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, it is getting the world's attention to say, now what? So the Lord is saying, enter the majesty and the sovereignty of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the kingdom of heaven. And so for the body of Christ, it is for us to align ourselves and is for us to position ourselves according to the mandate of the kingdom of God. 
And so even though we have our individual callings and, and places and positions and movement that God has ordained, and though it may be so, there are certain things that some of us are looking for that will not manifest unless you are rightfully tempered with the body of Christ as God has ordained. Is that clear? I want to make sure that's clear. Hello, Apostle General Marilyn Robert. God bless you. I wanted to make sure that I tagged you in this because this is a release from heaven that the Lord Apostle Robert wanted me to make sure that I made. I've been praying for you, been praying for Florida, been praying that the Lord would even add a greater force, a greater angelic force to your movement and speaking to the atmospheres and commanding the winds from the north, south, east, and west to be peace, to command peace be still in the state of Florida and overall, that the vortex even that comes from the, from the waters would be silenced and that every demonic force, whether it comes from a man-made or a mermaid or whatever it comes from, whatever demonic spirit would shut its mouth and that its force would be domiciled, as it were, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So thank you, General Robert. And I want to thank also uh, my uh, a spiritual daughter, a spiritual daughter, not a disciple, because she got her impartation from the Holy Ghost and from her spiritual father in Florida, but even Apostle uh, uh, Tina Johnson um, in, in Texas who took her post in praying and, and speaking to the atmosphere as she is, as, as God commands her to do quite often. So thank you all for your prayers. Thank you for uh, Center of, Man of Manifestation in Florida and Tampa for the work that you do. The Lord's blessings to you. You know, everybody can't sit on that post and pray and speak to the winds. But when God has faithful watchmen and prophetic intercessors that will speak according to the revelation of heaven and command the kingdom of darkness and the works of Satan to be still and to muzzle his mouth and to stay his hand and to snatch out, <laughs> as one beloved apostle says, his spine and step on his neck and tell him you will shut up and your force will be silenced in the name of Jesus. It's time for us to move in the power and authority of the kingdom of heaven, of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is a physical place. That is where the throne of God is. But the kingdom of God is a is a revelation, is a revelation of the authority of God revealed through the church, the ecclesia, not the religious church that we have gotten used to, but the ecclesia that speaks according and bind what heaven has bound and loose what heaven has loosed and commands it to be so in the earth. Thank you, Jesus. I got to get to this word because I stand in agreement with every watchman, prophetic general and intercessor that has spoken to our airways, our nations and the world for the kingdom of God in this manifestation. Welcome to 5783. Welcome to 5783. I'm Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. This is what you waited for. For the female kings to join the male kings in the spirit so that the male and female expression of God will come forth in dominion for the whole earth. Not just our regions, not just our communities, not just our neighborhoods, not just our churches, not just our households, not just our bank accounts, not just our ministries, not just our money, not just our mandates, but for the kingdom of God. With that said, let's look at Leviticus 23. Get some water. Amen. God is good in all the time. God is good. Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to look at Leviticus 23. Look at where we've just come from and where we're going into and what God is saying. If you're just coming on, make sure you, you hear this from the beginning. Excuse me. 
Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, verse 23. I'm reading the King James. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Now this is God speaking to Moses in Mount Sinai. They are not yet in Canaan. Because Moses didn't go into Canaan. So God is preparing this new nation birthed at Mount Sinai with his legislation and he's giving them his time schedule, his time schedule. So the Hebrews who were at Mount Sinai are not yet Jews. So the calendar that we used to, that we see on the calendar is not a Jewish calendar. It is the calendar of God and of heaven given to the earth, given to Moses to give to the children of uh, who were Hebrews, the children of Israel, who would need this calendar in Canaan. So we need to get from the religious mindset and from the restrictions of, of ethnicity that says, oh, that's the Jewish calendar. No, it's not. It's God's. And this calendar, that is the same every year, though on different days, is the Lord speaking. In what I'm speaking, I'm speaking to the earth. So angels assigned to my authority recalibrate the airways for this word. That it may go forth to whom and to where it needs to go in Jesus' name. Verse 24, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. That memorial and that day and that first day of the seventh month was this past Sunday, the 25th of September in the year 2022. Verse 25, ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying also, on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Verse 28, and ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. This day will be next Wednesday. Sundown from next Tuesday to sundown next Wednesday. Blessings to you, Mother Paulette. Blessings to you. We are coming upon the Day of Atonement. So I need to clarify. You all can still hear me fine, yes? I need to clarify where we are in this year. Give me a thumbs up if you can still hear me, okay? I need to clarify where we are in this week because we'll never be here again. Thank you, Johaisa. We will never be here again. And where we are in this year and where we are in this time, thank you, Danielle, where we are in this time is as Jesus coming to the Jordan. He didn't come to the Jordan on the Day of Atonement. But before he came to the Jordan to be baptized, he came to bring the kingdom. But 30 years before then, there was a man who was a high priest named Zacharias. You all can rewind this because I just need to speak revelationally. There was a man in, in, in the, the book of Luke chapter 1 who was going into the Holy of Holies. And this man, Zacharias, who was the father of John the Baptist, was going into the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement, 30 years before Jesus would show up at the Jordan. Help me, Holy Ghost. And this Day of Atonement, and Zacharias not believing Gabriel was the reason why his mouth was shut. Because a, the angel Gabriel was giving a prophetic word of the kingdom that was going to be emerging. And saying to Zacharias, I have sanctified your loins and the loins of your wife to bring the forerunner, the first prophet in 430 years to the nation of Israel, that they might be prepared for the kingdom. So 
Is Elizabeth got pregnant? Mary goes to her house. Zechariah's mouth is open. If you read in Luke chapter 1 or chapter 2, and he prophesies more over the womb of Mary. Welcome, millennials. He prophesies more according to what's in the womb of Mary than he does about his own son. And what Zacharias was prophesying was the coming of something new in the kingdom that, that Israel had never seen before. And Zacharias was told that his, his son's name would be John, which means the grace of God. And Israel had never known the grace of God. But when Zacharias went into the Holy of Holies and was at the altar of incense, it was on the Day of Atonement, which is coming up next week. That Day of Atonement was the beginning of what would usher in, through prophetic intercession, the kingdom of God. In that regard, it is going to be a place where we have never been before. It is going to be the realignment of the people of God with heaven that the kingdom of God through the church, the ecclesia, can be made manifest. So that's why the Lord is dealing with some of you to say, I need you to realign. I need you to come out of, out of uh, 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 familiarity with yourself first so that you can see the familiarity that's around you. Because many of us have been familiar with ourselves because we have not seen that dimension in the spirit that reveals the kingdom. So we say, well, God, I guess I'll just deal with it. Well, now God is saying the day of atonement is coming in 2022, and I'm requiring everything out of alignment with my kingdom to be put under the blood. We don't need animals anymore, but the blood is the blood of the only lamb sacrificed once and for all the blood of Jesus. And I need everything realigned with my kingdom so that when the time comes, when plowing and sowing season really pushes forth after the Day of Atonement, after Feast of Tabernacles, and God is going to begin to reveal to some of you and already has begun to reveal, this is who I want you to work with. So there's going to be access points and there's going to be realignments that God is going to bring, be bringing things back to your remembrance of things that you forgot. God is going to be bringing things back to your remembrance that you thought was not a consideration anymore. That's, this is based on the word that I posted this morning. And so God is going to be saying, you thought I forgot, it just that it, it's just that it wasn't time. So for some of you, he's going to be leading you to get counsel and instruction. And you're going to have to submit your visions and your mandates to the instruction of others who need your, who, whose wisdom you need in order to manifest the will of God. Is that clear? Come on, give me some thumbs up. You're going to need to do that. So the Feast of Trumpets has taken place. That was Sunday. There's 10 days or what is called the days of all. No, he has not forgotten, Dr. Womack. The days of all. That means in, in, verse, um, in verse 25, excuse me, in verse 27 of Leviticus 23, the Lord said, you shall afflict your souls. Now, what that means is not that you go into condemnation, but you check your motives. You check your intellect, make sure it's in alignment with God. You check your emotions and make sure you're not being led by your emotions, but by the spirit of God. You check your soul and you make sure that your soul is brought. God bless you, General uh, Veronica Moore. You, you bring, Apostle Moore, you bring your soul into subjection to what heaven is requiring through you as part of a member of the body of Christ through the Ecclesia. Is that clear? Give me some thumbs up. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Because I want to make sure there's no questions. If you have any questions, please post them. Because I know it's a delayed effect. I know it's a delayed effect. From me speaking and you hearing, is, is, there's, there's a delay. <laughs> a lot of times as if from heaven. So the, 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 the day of atonement... Is the Lord saying, check your motives, check your emotions, check your intellect. Make sure you're not exalting your intellect. Thank you, Prophet Sweeney. Make sure you're not exalting your intellect above what God is revealing. Because the Lord showed it to me like this. He said, when my kingdom, he showed me this in 2001, September 19, 2001. 
I remember the day. It was a Sunday. And I was in my consecration as a prophet in Georgia as a California resident. And the Lord showed it to me like this. He said that when my kingdom begins to move, there are going to be those who are already packed and just standing and waiting. They got their bags packed. And they're doing the little things that they can do while they're waiting on me. Then there are going to be those when my kingdom begins to move who have started to pack but got distracted and now the trumpet blows and says, let's go. And they say, oh my goodness, now? And so now, because they didn't finish packing, they have to throw some things in the suitcase and start running with God because they don't want to be left behind. So some people, as they get moving, they may see that, oh, only pack one of those pairs of shoes. You ever pack to go somewhere and you intended to pack a pair of shoes for an outfit and you realize that you only packed one shoe? And so now you got to go to the store or something and take time out to go shopping because you didn't pack everything like you thought you did. This is the time we're in right now. And then there are going to be those who is just kind of as, as, as we older folks would say, lollygagging and, and, and occupied with other things and didn't pack it all, didn't take it seriously. No, I don't have to get ready. Like those that were called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then with the trumpet sounds and after the day of atonement in this year and come mid-October, there are going to be those who are going to be trying to grab, grab a suitcase in the spirit and throw some things in it and try to run with God. But really what you're going to need to do is to sit down and get instruction because the kingdom calls everybody into accountability, everybody from child to the most archbishop. It doesn't matter who you are. The kingdom of God and the Day of Atonement in this year requires everybody to afflict our souls and to say, God, I want to make sure, is everything aligned the way you would have it? With me, with my household, with my money, with my stewardship, with my vision, with the vision that you've entrusted to me, in what way? And Lord, I humble myself to whomever you have ordained me to work. And to lend my voice, my skill, my whatever to, to the building of your kingdom. I thank you for you. And it's up to you to have the resolve to follow the Holy Ghost. Nobody can make you have a resolve. God bless you, Apostle Walker. Nobody can make you choose. One thing I tell people. I tell them, I can feed you if you're hungry. But I cannot loan you my appetite. And so... There are those that personally I don't waste my I don't waste my time trying to convince people of what God is saying. I speak what he's telling me to speak. I don't argue about it. I don't debate it. This is what God is saying. This is what God is doing. This is how God is moving. If you believe it, then you'll you'll align yourself. Okay? But that there again that visual that the Lord gave me of those that are packed, ready to go. Just waiting on the movement of God and and the, the, the and to follow the cloud and, and wait on angelic assistance and wait on the Lord's go. Let's go. Then there are those that still need to pack and say, oh man, I didn't finish packing. I need to hurry up. And then there are those who have not packed at all. Miss season after season after season to be ready for this kingdom hour. I said earlier, and I'm going to look at one more scripture and I'm done. I said earlier that the exit of the late Queen Elizabeth II is the Lord saying, it's, it, it's, I had said it in, in one of, I think my last podcast for last Monday, I said it in the last podcast that it's as Methuselah who saw something before he died. He lived to be 969 years old and he died before the flood came. He died right before the flood came, the flood came. But he saw something and he had a son named Lamech and Lamech had a son named Noah who Lamech saw something and said, this son shall comfort us concerning the works of our hands because of the ground that the Lord has cursed. So ever for all those generations, they were dealing with Adam eating the fruit. Please hear me. Because we're living too low without revelation. 
the world in the time when Noah was born was still toiling and struggling because God had cursed the ground for Adam's sake because he ate the fruit. The ground was cursed for the male expression because of the male expression of God. The female expression, General Marilyn Robert, the Lord has called you and positioned you as a midwife and you have been pushing out, my God, the female expression of God and prophetic intercessors and watchmen because of the toil of the womb since the Garden of Eden. Your positioning in the kingdom of God, Marilyn Robert, Apostle Marilyn Robert, has been to push out prophetic intercessors and warriors that the kingdom of God would be made manifest and God had put that burden on you around 1999 that went all the way back to the Garden of Eden. The toil of the womb, prophetic intercession, revelationally speaking, the toil of the ground, apostolic movement and building and visionary building. Are y'all following me? Let me know. Y'all following me? Let me know. What God is doing is restoring when Methuselah had Lamech and Lamech had Noah. They knew that God was about to do something different. They didn't know it was going to be a flood. That was revealed to Noah. The Bible says and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So God gave Noah this apostolic assignment, as it were, this global assignment to build the specifications and it was a hundred years. But only eight people were the remnant of the world and got in the ark. The point is this. There was something that Methuselah saw, because I, I was referring to the late Queen Elizabeth II. There was something that Methuselah saw that by the time that Noah finished the ark, here comes the flood and the comforting of their hands that was supposed to take place with Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We are the offspring of Noah's sons. And God in this kingdom hour has called us to rebuild as in after the flood. So the Lord is saying, look, I needed the sign of Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth II making an exit is me saying, now is the time for my kingdom specifications. So the Lord is saying, stop fearing what I told you to do. Stop fearing the cares of this life. And some of y'all need to sow into this word because you need the clarity of eyesight and the grace of God for what God has called you to do. And I'm not doing this. Y'all know me. For those that know me, this is not no fundraiser. But some of you need to sow into the grace of this word because you have been, you started packing, but you got distracted. And for God to catch you up in grace and in strength and in eyesight to where he is causing you to go. For where he is causing you to go. The grace. Some of you need to give an offering into 5783 to say, Lord, I need strength, wisdom, and insight. I need your guidance. I need the guidance from your Holy Spirit that I might know how to finish packing. <laughs> how to finish packing. And even those that didn't pack at all, what to do, whose wisdom and counsel to follow. Last scripture. Last scripture. What scripture did I put in there? First Corinthians. I forgot what scripture I put in there. I pray this is replenishing you, Apostle Marilyn Robert. We need you. My God, we need you. What scripture did I put in there, y'all? I forgot. Uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians. The Lord would speak. There are times when the Lord speaks to me and he gives me a scripture. He gives He, he talks to me in scripture many times. And I don't remember exactly where the specific address is. I just know what he's saying. So I go to the law of God, to the legislation of God, in order to instruct the body of Christ. All right? So I believe, let's see, what did I, what did I put? I'm serious, y'all. I forgot what scripture was. 1 Corinthians. Let me 
me see. Uh, let's see. First Corinthians. Yes, 15. Last scripture. First Corinthians. Apostle Rita Odell, blessings to you, woman of God. First Corinthians chapter 15. And I want to use this in the New Testament as a reference. First Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to start with, with verse uh, 50. I don't know what verse I put there. I'm going to start with 48. And, and First Corinthians 15 verse 48, it says, as is the, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit, inherit the kingdom of God. As I've said, I said this early and I'll say again. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is a literal physical location. It's in heaven. It's where the throne of God is. You don't need a throne unless there are things that need to be judged. But the kingdom of God is the authority and the sovereignty of God revealed through the church in the earth. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is eternal. It is the only eternal kingdom. There is no other kingdom that's eternal. It is the only eternal kingdom. Everybody else has been given permission, even Satan, Every other kingdom is, has been given permission by God to function. There is no other kingdom that's eternal. Let me make that real clear. So God is calling for his church to operate from, as Dr. Hewitt spoke, being seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that the kingdom of heaven may be manifested as the kingdom of God in his sovereignty in the earth. Is that clear? Give me a thumbs up, please. The kingdom of heaven is the only eternal kingdom. That is where the throne of God is. God has blown his trumpet for 5783 and begins to judge the affairs of the earth. But he's calling for his body, the church, to, to be positioned. And even through the day of atonement, rewind if you need to, that we might be aligned with his sovereignty so the kingdom of God, his sovereignty can be revealed through the church in the earth. So flesh and blood, intellect, emotions cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You have to be seated in heavenly places to function according to the kingdom of God because you have to have the power of the Christ moving through you, which means what? You can't be in your flesh. You can't be based on your emotions and, and, and based on, it has to be revelation of the kingdom. Jesus said this to his disciples who he sent forth as apostles. When he said, who do men say that I am and who do you say I am? He said, and upon this rock that I am the Christ, a revelation that I am the Christ. I will give to you keys of the kingdom of heaven. Those that have revelation of the Christ. You don't get keys of the kingdom of heaven without revelation of the Christ. With revelation of the Christ, which should be exemplified in our transformation, God gives keys from heaven so that the kingdom of God can be manifested in government, in music, in ministry, in the arts, in cosmetology, in geology, from the eighth mountain down, into education, into government, into marriage, into family, into the church. God gives keys into business, into law, into judicial systems, into military strategic alignments. God gives keys from heaven, from his eternal kingdom, so that the kingdom of God can be made manifest in the earth. So flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. This is. Paul is speaking. Of the trumpet. Which I am prophesying about the feast of trumpets that took place on sundown on Sunday. 
the last trump. The, it's going to be the last trumpet. It's going to be the last announcement that here comes the judge. There are going to be trumpets after trumpet. This particular trumpet of 5783 is ushering in the kingdom of God where God is speaking to his body and saying, align like I'm telling you to and do what I'm telling you to do. There is no part of the body, not the eyes, not the nose, not the ears, not the mouth, not the heart, not the organs, not the feet, not the hands, not the legs, not the ears. There is no part of the body that has the whole kingdom. So God is retempering his body so that the kingdom of God can be made manifest. Verse 53, the last trump in verse 52, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Who are we? Those who died in Christ. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. These flesh and blood is for the earth, not for heaven. And this mortal must put on immortality. In other words, Holy Spirit told me to digress and say this. We are not just to grow and be transformed and walk in an anointing and authority for the sake of walking in an anointing and authority. Our transformation on the day of the last trump in whatever level of spiritual maturity or authority that you are at the time and the day of the last trump is where you will remain forever. Once that last trumpet sounds, once that last trumpet sounds, whatever and whatever way, however you have packed your bags, however you have been prepared to go into the presence of God in a new heaven and a new earth and to the marriage supper of the Lamb to be given your rewards of those that survived the fire of God, that's where you will remain forever. So the corruptible must put on incorruptible. Because we don't hear enough about eternity. Eternity lives in us to prepare us to live in eternity. Eternity by the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us to teach us how to live from eternity so that we can go to the permanent dwelling place of the eternal kingdom. It's not just to say, look how much I've grown. Verse 54. So when this in, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Because it hasn't been brought to pass yet. Death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. Oh death. Where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy... We have not seen the dis total destruction of death yet because we still mourn those that are lost and the Lord comfort those whose loved ones have gone on and left this earth. But the total victory over death has not yet fully been accomplished. It's been accomplished in the spirit. But when this corruptible puts on incorruption and the last trumpet sounds that is going to be the conclusion of death except for those who have never accepted the Lord Jesus and who enter into eternal death verse 56 the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, brethren, be ye steadfast, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding. We got that <laughs> admonition from Apostle Marilyn Robert. Do more toiling and less talking. Be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know, because you cannot be steadfast and immovable, immovable if you don't know as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord last scripture that was the last scripture 
this Day of Atonement, this 5783. I want to make sure there are no questions. If you have them, please make sure you ask. Welcome to 5783. And from this prophet and this platform, the understanding of the movement of heaven and the earth as it pertains to his people, to his body, and to the church. For those that choose to give, I want to speak the Lord and have chosen to give. Father, thank you, Lord God. For Lord God, I thank you for angelic movement and hosts, Lord God, and a revealing, Lord God, and the clarity of your cloud that will go before them. I thank you, Lord God, for your destructive winds and movements against all works of every principality, power, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Lord God, I thank you that you will be rebuking Satan himself. Lord God, and binding his works in behalf of your remnant in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that those who have heard, Lord God, this word, Lord God, on this platform, on YouTube, Lord God, that you will give the strength to do your will. For those that are listening and will listen on YouTube, you can give by Zell, Dr. Dr. B as in boy, A. Griffin at gmail.com. That's Zell. If you choose to give through Cash App, it's dollar sign, lowercase k, S is in Sam, Q, U, A, R as in Robert. That's for those who choose. I am not releasing this word to co collect offerings, but it is a kingdom principle. It started with Abram in Genesis 15 when Abram, God, Abram had a word from God. He had obeyed God, but Abram wanted greater insight into what God was going to do and how was Abram going to know that he was going to receive it. And God asked of Abram, this is where it first started, at least where God revealed to me. God asked of Abram a sacrifice from his, from his stock from his flock and said, give me a sacrifice. And when Abram went to sleep, you will read in Genesis 15, verses 13 through 16, where God revealed to Abram the details of what was going to follow generations later. So it is a kingdom principle that when you're looking for greater insight and a prophetic word is released, the strength of that word, the, 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 the reward of the prophet is released to you. So for those that choose to give by this platform live or by YouTube, the Lord's blessings to you in that and the Lord open up your movement in the earth that heaven may be revealed in your lives. For those that say, I know I need to rededicate my life to the Lord, it's simple. Lord, I recognize and confess that I am a sinner and am in need of your forgiveness. Thank you for giving your son, Jesus who died on the cross and shed all of his blood that I might be saved. I received that sacrifice and asked for you to wash away my sin nature that I might receive your nature by the Holy Spirit and be led into my purpose and destiny. And if you pray that prayer, you become immediately a son of God and have access to eternal inheritance. And I will advise after that that you ask the Lord to who to sit under, what pastor to be revealed, whether in your region, whether in your atmosphere, in your nation, and of, of whose platform to follow that you may grow according to the word of God. Okay? So, blessings to you all. This is Dr. Brett A. Griffin. Hello. And blessings to your weekend. Blessings to my fellow female kings from Heads of State 2022. And continue blessings to all of you and look forward to next time, whenever the Lord says that is. But the Lord did interrupt my, my day today to say, before the Day of Atonement, we need to make sure my body is alive. And the Lord let me know that. So I did an interruption in order to release this word. Blessings to you all. Blessings to your apostles, Lamont and Tiff. Blessings to you in your work, in your apostolic work and movement. The Lord bless you. The Lord in your movement. I'm praying and speaking as the Lord would say thank you for this sound, first of all. 
but the Lord in any direction and redirection that the Lord may be giving you as apostles. I pray that the clarity of the Lord be yours, the direction of the Lord be yours, the provision of the Lord be yours, the angelic host and assistance of the Lord be yours in the name of Jesus, and that he would give you monumental Godspeed. Thank you, apostles. Lamont and Tiff for what you gave us in the nation's capital in sound, in revelation, and in movement. Blessings to you. Seed received in the name of Jesus, Prophet Whitaker. The Lord's blessings to you. We're keeping you in prayer and your movement, woman of God. Thank you for all that you do and that you have sacrificed. Blessings to you all until next time. Bye-bye.